We recorded this episode of the Sugar Show podcast back when we were in the beginning of lockdown, but I felt like it deserved a replay so you could hear from this young sugar boss babe. Check it out. Hello, hello, everyone. We are live on the Sugar Show live podcast. Normally, I do these episodes pre-recorded, but because we are all in lockdown, I wanted to make sure that you all had access to some sweet success stories that will really inspire you, help you to understand that there is hope for your skincare business if you add sugar, and really the kind of success that other estheticians are seeing by adding the sweet stuff to their practice. So today, uh, Mabel from Tapira, I asked her, you know, in your in your your sugaring community, who stands out as a success story? And she immediately said Hayden Snyder. So welcome Hayden to the Sugar Show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was an honor to hear from Mabel that she had suggested me for this. Um, it really is an honor, and it's actually given me something to do during this quarantine. So <laughs> I'm very thankful. Oh, I love it. And thank you for putting earrings on and getting dressed for us because, you know, it's it the is. first time in two months <laughs> that I've gotten to do this. Right. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So Hayden and I have been chatting before the podcast just about her and her story. And she is a dynamo, my friends. This woman is takes boss babe to the next level and i'm really really like mabel really proud to share her story with you so let's talk for a moment about you how old are you hayden i am freshly 23 years old i turned oh. 23 in february she's a baby <laughs> she's a baby i love it but she's a badass baby i'll tell you you are a force to be reckoned with you are like yeah. youth on fire which is awesome. So if you are someone who has been sugaring for or waxing or maybe doing skincare in your in your 50s, like I will soon be, uh, and you're kind of wondering like, eh, I do wax, you know, why would I switch? I'm telling you, these youngsters are coming up on our tail, so you had better be trained and ready to go, huh? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's back up like I do with all of our success stories and talk about your how you got into the beauty industry what's your what's your story girl okay so my story is kind of a strange one um i graduated high school and got accepted to Furman university in south carolina i went there for a year and a half and then decided that being two hours from home was just not my thing so i came back home did another year at another local college here and i was potentially going to school to major in chemistry to do pediatric oncology, which I still truly love chemistry and would probably still really enjoyed it. I just, I was not good at all of the other subjects. I was always ace in chemistry and not the others. And it just was very frustrating. And one day I can never, I can never remember if it was my boyfriend or my foreign exchange student at the time who had suggested, you know, you're really good at makeup. You like makeup. Why don't you work at Sephora or Ulta? And I was like, hmm, you know, I mean, I've never thought about that. I just always enjoyed doing it on myself and on for me, not for others. Um, and so I, it just kind of sparked something and I started researching and I had figured, you know, I already want to go into the medical field, so why don't I go and become a medical esthetician, go to aesthetic school, and then go afterwards and advance into further techniques for medical side. And then when I got into school, I just I enjoyed all of it, and I didn't think I would, and now I'm just a regular licensed esthetician with my own company. Oh, there's nothing regular about you, girl. <laughs> Okay, so you learned how to wax in school. Yes, we did. Did you learn how to sugar? We did. We were taught using tapira sugar, and um, we got our certifications through tapira, but through Kenneth Schuler because they were partnered at the time. And I 
actually never was interested in sugar. Um, I really just, because when I first started and we were learning about waxing and learning about sugar, I just, I was still in the whole mindset of medical aesthetics. I'm going to go, I'm just going to do facials. I'm going to do anti-aging, Botox, blah, blah, blah. And so I just was always like, I just, I don't want to delve into it. So I don't really want to like do all the extra work like we had to get our basics basic cross off um services with wax but to get our sugar license we had to do a certain number of customers with sugar and i just was like you know i just won't do it i mean i'll just do the wax stuff get it over with get my uh degree everything and then one day um i can't really quite remember we were doing something and I was in the clinic by myself with my teacher and the rest of our class was listening to a speaker or something and we were in there working on like laundry and there was a customer who came in who wanted a leg bikini underarm full face sugar and I was like oh my gosh like I don't know I'm not that good I don't know deep end I was just, I was so, and I was the only one that could do it. And I just was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I'm not good at it. And um, by the time, and I did her and it actually went very smoothly and a lot better than I had expected it to. Uh, and after that customer, I actually had almost over half of my certifications needed for my sugar license completely marked off just from that one customer. And I was like, I mean, it wasn't that bad, so I, and I'm halfway there already, so I may as well just go ahead and get it. Who knew that I would enjoy it so much? <laughs> okay, so you keep sugaring at school. You get your license. How long ago was that? That was almost a year ago. I took my practical exam a year ago today, actually, uh, and then I got, I think I got my confirmed approval that I was going to get my license maybe like the second week of May. So it is, it has almost been a year of full licensure. <laughs> wow. You are really a newbie. <laughs> Very new. so let's talk about what it means to be a newbie who literally just pushed the gas and turned on the turbo. So you get out of school, you have your license. It is a year ago what a difference a year makes. So talk uh, about how you got into this, this, well, by the way, down <laughs> South sugar, <laughs> throw it out there. That's one of the greatest names. Yes. Just try the sugar mama. I'm just saying my mom actually came up with it. So, okay. That's brilliant. <laughs> so good job, mom. It's great. Uh, we actually have another store in town called raised down South and it was just kind of funny that it kind of correlated, but so it kind of still had something to do with our town and just being in South Carolina and the down South of the country. And then it all down down. A long time meaning. <laughs> down <laughs> south. I love it. It's so classy and so appropriate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that was fast forward into your name, but let's back up to mm -hmm. have your license. You have, you know, skincare skills, you have the sugaring skills and what do you do right out of school? So when I graduated school, I spent a couple of weeks, mostly the first few weeks before I took my um, written exam, I spent it trying to actually get into a local salon here who I knew had extra space and didn't have an esthetician. And I was like, hey, I can really ramp up your business. I mean, I'm a really great business person. I graduated top of my class, uh, which I didn't mention. I graduated in the top of my class at Kennedy. Go, girl. I was the first person at Hartswell's or in Florence's campus of Kenneth Schuler to get the third key apron, which is the highest you can get based off of retail and attendance and services and reviews and all of that. Um, I had the most certificates and all of that nice stuff. So I was at the top of my class and I was just like, listen, I can really help you. Like I'm, I just, I have the skills. I have the proper credentials. I have everything I need. I can increase your business so much. And they just 
they weren't interested in me. And I just was like, you know what? This is dumb. Why am I trying to work for somebody else? When I can work for myself, I'll do things the way I want to do them. Um, I'm extremely headstrong, <laughs> if you haven't already noticed. So I was just like, I, I can do this, you know? I can do this. And within a week, I found a building in the middle of downtown Hartsville. And here I am. And we were open June 10th. June 10th. You had just gotten your license. You had just gotten a few no's. Mm -hmm. And you were like, mm -mm, I'm not going to let no's hold me back. I love it. You were on two months. two months. I love it. I love it. Okay. So now you have this, is it a big room, little room? It's, it's a, it's kind of small ish. Okay. <laughs> but Did you can go all the way around the table. Yeah, I can go fully around the table and I actually just moved in some, um, cabinetry. So I have, a good little bit of extra room. Okay, so just enough room to get around the table. So you're in a tiny little room and you're looking around and you're like, okay, I've got to fill it with clients. Mm -hmm. Now what? So what did you do next? So before I even opened, as soon as I got my building and we came up with Down South Sugar Company, I made a Facebook page and I just sort of helped string along everyone. They were watching. I was keeping them updated with what was going on in here. We had had some walls put in, we had a new sign made and I just was keeping them all up to date. Like, Hey, check it out. We just got a new sign. Check it out. We just got our rooms made. Building the excitement. Um, I was keeping them, I was dragging them along, you know, keeping them interested. And yeah, just out of nowhere, all of a sudden and about a month, I had over a thousand likes and followers on my page and it just, it was blowing up and mostly I would say Facebook has just done the most for me. Good for you. And you're the only one that sugars in, yes, in your town? I, I am the only esthetician, so I'm the only one that sugars. In your town? Yeah. No, not in my town, unfortunately, but um, we have maybe six other people in town who sugar, but I'm the only one who talks about it, which is why everyone was coming to me because they had never heard of sugar and it yeah. was so interesting. And, um, I just was keeping them so educated on what it was, how it was better, how it would have improved their lives and their situation. Um, I helped in educate and inform people specifically about Brazilians because it, it's kind of scary for people down here where I am. So people are a little more hesitant to it. And it just, it just was so nice for some people to have a person to help walk them through it. But, um, I just, I was the only person here that uh, even tried to talk about it and wanted to not capitalize on it, but capitalize on it and mm -hmm. not just focus on wax and so most people in town don't even know that there are other people. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. So you're, you're, how often do you work? Are you, are your books filled? Are you, tell us about like your, your business, your books. Of course. I am open six days a week. I'm only closed on Sundays. I do work about only a half a day on Saturdays just because I, I do need a little bit of a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. I work six days a week and my books actually up until we had to close for this whole mess. Um, I was booked maybe like two or three weeks in advance. My Saturdays, because I, I said I work a small amount of time on Saturday. My Saturdays were booked in advance, almost over a month in advance. Um, it's, it's been insane. It's completely just blown up. It is so what percentage do you think you do what you do facials still you do skin do, care. Yeah. what percentage do you think you do facials versus sugaring um so out of my entire business i know for sure that my sugaring is over 60 percent of my business um and i offer mostly facial so i i would say that probably the other i would say between 30 to the other 40 percent of my business would be facials because I mean that's compiled of chemical peels and regular facials. Um, I don't do very many body treatments. I, when I first started, I was doing a good little number of the facials, which in my service is called the pretty kitty. Um, but those kind of just died down because it wasn't, I guess, summer anymore. And 
mm -hmm. just weren't. It will probably pick up once we get towards summer, but um, but back facials, I don't do very many of those. So I would say probably that other 30 to 40 percent is probably my facial stuff. Yeah. So when you're talking to these folks, because now we have to move those clients, you know, when are we opening again? When are we opening again? Right. And we have to move those clients. We have to keep slowly moving them out because we don't want to move them out too far. And then, you know, so we're kind of yeah. inching along month to month. What would, what is the response that you're getting back from people? What are your clients saying the most to you? <laughs> they miss me. Oh, they miss me so much. I miss them incredibly. Um, I probably miss them a lot more than they miss me. They would not agree, but um, I just, I have so many people that are like, Hayden, I miss you. I'm so hairy. <laughs> um, my best friend, who is actually my receptionist, she messages me almost at least once a week, maybe twice a week saying, Hayden, I'm a woolly mammoth. Help me. <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, Can awful. you please just make an exception? You're like, no, I, not. it's illegal. <laughs> I actually had a client um, earlier today message me. Her husband had his back sugared um, a month or two ago for the first time with me, and he wasn't as excited about it. And then she messaged me, and she was like, he really wants his back done again. And he said, if it gets too long, he's not going to do it again. We need a house call. And I was like, I can't. <laughs> Hold on. I can't Aww. do it. People the men miss you. I love it. I love it. Okay, so you started um with Tapira is who you certified with. Yes. Um are you still using Tapira and talk I about the products you're using? Um so I use Tapira and I use their soft, medium, and firm paste. They're all incredible. I use the firm mostly for Brazilians or underarms, depending on if it's their first time. I use medium for anything on the face mostly, or if I have any Brazilian maintenances that are really just thinned out and easy to come out. And then soft I use for um, arms and legs so I can get good coverage. Backs does, does amazing on backs and chest. Um, I also use the pre-cleanse spray that she has, that stuff is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I also use the drying powder. Oh, See, they're calling you already. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, they know I'm here. <laughs> She's not in the shop. <laughs> and I use the drying powder, which as we've been in fall and winter, I haven't had to use the drying powder as much because people aren't coming in sweaty or we keep it pretty cool in here because I get extremely hot while I'm doing services. Um, so people have not been sweating as much, which is good, but we're getting to the point where I will have to start using it again. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Hungarian mud mask is incredible. I love using that on, um, my Brazilian customers, especially if they're people with super fair skin or extremely thick rooted hair, it just helps to calm them down and just keep them from getting red and irritated and swollen. Talk um, about how you use that within the treatment. Do you upsell for your Hungarian mask? In I do, yep. I just do a little bit. I just do it. Well, I also have hydro jelly masks that I use, so I give them the option. We can either upcharge $15 for a hydro jelly mask or the Hungarian mud mask, just kind mm -hmm. of whatever their preference is. Because um, I know some people are like, especially my younger girls are really more into that hydro jelly mask because it's just really cool to watch and it's really interesting but i highly suggest for my people who maybe have the thicker hair or have like a thicker red based hair um super fair skin i you generally suggest them to have the hungarian mud mask mm -hmm. okay and then you use the post lotion as well i do okay so i'm i know that miss mabel mabel machabunga butler who owns tapira <laughs> is probably watching and cheering you on <laughs> on this live. Um, what she doesn't know is that you and I spent some time really raving about her and what a class act she is. And so yes. if you could just kind of do a little shout out to Miss Mabel and about the experience you've had with her and her team, that would be great. Of course. Um, Mabel is absolutely incredible. Uh, I 
got to meet her when I was in school. She did come to visit while I was in school, which was the first time I had ever met her. And she is just so down to earth and just so passionate about what she does. Um, it was just amazing to hear her story and how she just came to be and is just this big, great force of energy. And she just is rocking her world of sugar. And I just love hearing everything about it and she just is so passionate and I really can connect with that because I am a very passionate person about what we do um and she just she has the best workers she has the best customer service her business is amazing I message her whenever I need sugar and she gets it to me most times it comes to me before she even sends me the tracking and I'm like this is amazing <laughs> and she just she's the best Really she really is a blessing. And, and what I love about these success stories and what I love about hearing your story is about how an owner is truly present in her business and truly on your side yes. to make sure that you are a success. Mm -hmm. And that's it does. one of the many professional things that I love about Mabel, but uh, really having a company on your side is is really how you've, you've been assisted. How much sugar do you actually order in a month, would you say, from them? So I, between using soft, medium, and firm, I order about five of each paste, probably once a month, maybe depending on if I'm doing one ser more service than the other. Um, so if I'm doing more Brazilians, I would probably order a 10 each month of firm, same with um, the soft if I'm doing more legs or things like that. Um, but I think out of all, I probably range 15 to 20 containers a month. And that's for six days a week of straight yeah. sugaring. So you really make the most out of those little jars. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the sugar show. Thank I you. I love young inspirations like yourself because us old dogs have been doing this for a while and I really love that you are a dynamo and you really took a skill that you knew in your heart of hearts that you were really able to do well and you took it to the next level and sometimes being an employee is the route people take sometimes being you know just a solo sole proprietor is the route they take but you went all out girl you are down south sugar company LLC yes I am <laughs> You go, girl. I'm super proud of you. Thank you for being a part of okay. our sugar community. And I look forward to meeting you live someday, little miss. I know. That would be amazing. All right, my girl. Sugar Tribers, sugar community, thank you so much for being on this podcast. And I look forward to sharing more success stories with you very soon. Stay sweet. And remember, we got this.